Here we have an excellent grouping of ground, paleo, stone effigy artifacts. And uh, we have a number of them from Mount Shasta, California, four of them. We have a Clovis point that has been modified into a story stone face and mammoth effigy as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, including that one to show you the etching techniques and grinding techniques that our ancient paleo ancestors employed in flake stone manufacturing, flake stone effigy manufacturing. And then a beautiful Lerma round based point. Uh, this, this is a point that I acquired from Dr. Michael Gramley. And uh, Dave Wally, one of Dr. Gramley's uh, friends and colleagues, found this in Belize. And the cool thing is, is that, that uh, this has been ground. The surface of it has been completely ground in paleo times. Now, we know it was ground in paleo times because the flaking scars were added after it was ground. You can see the flaking scars come up to abrupt terminations with ridges that are crisp. Had they polished it or ground it after they had flaked it, those flaking scar ridges would all be ground over. They'd all be smoothed over, and uh, they're not. You can see that with the naked eye, let alone a 10-power loop. But um, so it was ground first and then flaked. And the cool part is the etching lines that are on this. These etching lines that were put into this piece, you can see them here. That would be the gills and the scale, scales of the fish. And this, this, this side was pretty well etched with these etching lines. And what we have here is a fish uh, with its eye here, maybe a shark, with all the etching lines in this. Uh, they all come all the way down. It may be hard to see them, but uh, they're all the way across the surface. And they, it, they were there to make the scales of the fish. Now, this effigy is featured in Dr. Michael Gramley's ResearchGate article, uh, entitled Thick Lancelets and the Development of Fluted Points. I acquired this Lerma Round Base uh, Paleo Point from Dr. Michael Gramley. You can see the etching on it for the scales and the gills. And that's the eye of the fish been flaked out intentionally. And then when you turn it this way, a really cool fish there, or maybe even an eel with the eye there facing off to the right now. If you turn it this way, now we have uh, another eel with uh, the eye or a fish looking off to the right. And in this direction, we also have another eye that's been intentionally flaked out and a fish facing off to the left. Now, uh, this is the uh, original chert. The, the flint on this is a translucent, semi-translucent root beer colored brown chert. You wouldn't know it because of this white patina. This is heavily, heavily patinated paleo piece. And it's a very rare effigy because most effigies are mammoth effigies with flake stone. They're story stone face and mammoth effigies that I discovered back in October of 2020. And uh, they uh, image uh, one young human face, one older human face, and one baby or juvenile mammoth and, or pro proboscidean and one aged proboscidean on each stone. But this does not. This, this is a fish effigy, which is quite rare, to be honest. It's the only one I've ever seen for paleo effigies. Now then, we also have this wonderful Clovis point. This was used, and it's slightly damaged in ancient times. A little bit of tip wear there. And it's been resharpened down at least once. Um, you can tell from the hafting that it's been resharpened down. See how it tapers in with all those little resharpening lines? It's been resharpened down at least once. And uh, as it reduced in size, the Paleo Indians went ahead and modified this into a Paleo Story Stone face and mammoth effigy, as they do many Clovis points, preforms, knives. Uh, after their useful life expectancy, they go ahead and just take a nick, make a nick here, make a nick there, do a little engraving, and they're done. 
They can modify it into a story stone face and mammoth effigy. I wanted to point out the ancient engraving. That's all etching lines that were made into the stone um, to image the hair on top of the faces. So we'd have this inclusion here, for example, plus uh, this nose over here. Actually, you have two eyes right there. You have two great eyes right here and a mouth right below it, looking right at us. And then the hair above. And they did that intentionally. They added that flake. There was no reason to do that. When you look over here, that flake was certainly intentionally added. No reason to do that. They don't make errors like that. Uh, so that's the eye, the nose, and mouth of a face looking off to the right. And another one looking off to the left. And engraved hair, very much so on this side as well. So they did a lot of etching on uh, Clovis points. I have several Clovis points, some from Florida that are heavily etched. River polished and etched. And this has been uh, uh, basically smooth and then etched. And heavily, heavily patinated Clovis point. Four inch long knife river Clovis point. And now we have the good grinding on the best of the best of the uh, of the volcanic glass pieces. Um, the Paleo Indians in Mount Shasta did beautiful grinding on the surface to bring out imagery. Just outstanding workmanship. We know they ground the edges of Clovis points on the base. A lot of basal grinding, and we know they ground the surfaces and faces of points. Well, they also ground the surfaces and faces of uh, Paleo story stones. And the volcanic glass ones from Mount Shasta that are three or more colors are very, very rare and extremely prized by our Paleo Indian friends. And that's why they went to the trouble of making them extra beautiful. Here we have the grinding on here. The, the flaking was done like in this point here. The flaking was done after the piece was ground. The flaking scars come up to abrupt ridges, and there's no grinding going over those ridges, smoothing them out at all. So it was ground before it was flaked, which is typical of their workmanship. We have an eye, a nose, and a mouth of a very cool face. They ground it there, chip the eye, and chip the mouth with a big, beautiful headdress up above. And when we turn it this way, now we have a couple of great eyes. This big eye here, nose and mouth of a great face looking off to the right, wearing a headdress now. And this same eye with the drooping nose over here with the big older face looking off to the left. So the young face looking off to the right and the old face looking off to the left. And then the mammoth imagery is excellent. Here's the eye of the mammoth that they ground into the stone. Unbelievable. And then we have the mammoth facing left. A very cool mammoth with an exaggerated eye of a baby mammoth with its little trunk facing off to the right. And then we have another mammoth facing off to the left. And another mammoth here facing off to the right. Just an excellent, beautifully flaked in Paleo times. There's no modern workmanship on this. If there was, you'd notice it because glass really shows modern workmanship. Now we have a very cool, they ground this area to make this face. Eye, eye, nose, and mouth looking right at us. Eye, eye, nose, and mouth. They did that super intentionally. And it's a horn shaman to boot. So it's a horn sh shaman face looking at us through the grinding. That's why they did the grinding. Outrageous. And then we have that baby mammoth facing left. And we have another great mammoth facing right. But the really good mammoth imagery is over here. They really etched the hair on this one excellently. The hair of the mammoth is just etched beautifully. And we have a mammoth now with its eye pecked out right there with his trunk coming down to the right. And the baby mammoth facing this way is outstanding. That's its eye, its little trunk, and look at the flare of hair coming up from the side of that mammoth. Outrageous. And then when we hold it this way, we have the nose and mouth 
and hair of the face uh, vertically here and uh, another face with a nose over here and the hair coming up that way. Just an outstanding example. Here's yet another very cool piece from Mount Shasta. All of these are. And Mount Shasta was Clovis. No doubt about it. I've got Clovis bifaces that are made into effigies out of this volcanic glass. And uh, uh, several archaeologists have seen them and they know what they are. So here what we have here is a, a beautiful flaked mammoth with the hair tuft. But the cool part is the faces that they ground into this. This is the old face with the eye, the nose, and the mouth chipped away. So the mouth is chipped away here. That eye is chipped out. That's the nose of the old face. The young face has this eye chipped out, this nose and mouth, looking off to the left. And then when you look them together, there's another face looking right at us. But that is so cool. Those are good face imagery. That's a great face profile of an old face looking off bearded, bearded old face. And then the face over here, this eye here, and then nose and mouth, is now a face looking off to the right. When we turn it over, we have another great mammoth image facing right. Beautifully flaked, I might add. We have another mammoth facing left. Great image there. Big sweeping trunk. And we have that same sweeping trunk mammoth now facing right. And last but not least, this one's not ground, but it's from Mount Shasta. What a great eye this is. This is unifacial. It was flaked by Paleo Indians Clovis. They exposed the bubble in the glass and made it a hole there for the eye, the nose and mouth of a face, the young face looking off to the right. Now the old droopy nose face, big Romanesque nose, older face, wearing a hat up here, eye, nose, and mouth of the older face looking off to the left. We turn it this way, we have a great mammoth image now facing left, and we have a really good mammoth image now facing right. So just another well-flaked paleo story stone engraved and ground paleo effigies.